Hi everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, I want to talk about my predictions for the Hydra clash that's happening as part of Faction Games 2023, organized by none other than Deadwood Jedi. Uh, unfortunately for me, I'm not taking part in Hydra this year, but hey, we're going to take part in this way. Uh, we'll see how it goes. The competitors that are going to be going into this, and the rules are very simple. You have to use only one faction, and you have to use epics or rares or uncommon so epics or below in terms of rarity makes it very very challenging uh but it should be interesting we've got victor tez with the demon spawn for paella chorizo and ships uh for our team we've got safira with the knight revenant it's actually the knight's revenant deadwood what is this there's an s there unbelievable i always get it wrong as well i'll be completely honest uh, i always come to the knight revenants uh i get confused and then we've got mtg jedi with the sacred order uh for hydra as well so some interesting factions i mean my thought definitely going into it was that sacred order would be the number one hydra faction but let's dive into the game and let's break it down bit by bit so here we go i see it's actually mtg jedi with capitals my bad um let's go what i have is very simple I think this would be a useful way to do it as well, is to not only give you my thoughts on which six champions they will pick, but also the priority order that I would give them. Like, how certain would I be of locking them into a team? Uh, it should be interesting as well, because I'm doing this without any testing, and uh, I don't know, you, I, sometimes I, I do try to reveal as much behind-the-scenes stuff as I can, but you guys probably don't realize, like, sometimes I go into making a Hydra team, I'm like, yeah, this will this will be great, this is brilliant. And then I, I press go on the team. I'm like, oh, wait, no, this team actually sucks. We did one of those recently. I, think, I can't remember which video it was. We had one recently anyway, where I, I built a team and it, we won key. I think it was brutal, no problem. But I realized there was literally zero healing on the team. So I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that going in. So it's, it is easy to forget about stuff. Um, but yeah, let's go into it. So for Sacred Order, none of the rares really jumping out to me i can say that immediately we're mostly focused on the epics and there's plenty of them i would say for me the epics let's actually shrink this down so i don't cover as much of it let's actually make it smaller i think my number one pick would definitely be uh inquisitor shamail he's a no-brainer here to bring in you guys know i use this guy all the time but look just turning the head of torment into a non-issue um this is a competition i think that you got to play to to win um, I guess you could play for just being lucky and hope that the other teams do worse, but I think you want to play to do your best. And I, I love me some RNG, so I think relying on that randomness, that Head of Torment will spawn in and you'll get supercharged for your team. That's so strong. He also hits really hard. So he, I'd be definitely locking him in. He can do big damage. You can build him as a mischief tank. He counters Torment. So I think it's kind of win-win, honestly, with Shamail. And the number two position... Ooh, interesting. It's pretty much has to be Deacon Armstrong, I think. Would it be? Or to be Mordecai? I'm just thinking, is there another decreased defense? So there is Frostbringer. Okay, you know, what? I'm going to put Mordecai in number two. Just because of that, I will actually put Mordecai as my second choice here. Very simple. The reason why the AoE burn, which also brings increased attack. Now, I think that's very strong. Um, Especially with the Shemail. Look, there you go. Your damage Shemail is already off to a massive start. I mean, that's 50% more damage for that Shemail. That's pretty big. The AoE burn is really good. He has some decent turn meter stuff going on as well, uh, which I think is nice. Accuracy aura if you need it. I probably would be bringing in Mordecai as just giving you really solid damage. He can put the burn on through the poison cloud as well, which I think is actually very strong here, where we're going to be really like he's got no provokers that are good so you're gonna get cleanses going off i think that just is too much for you so i would be locking that one in i think i would be bringing in a deacon armstrong then probably after that it's a real question like the thing about frostbringer it's very random decreased defense that could mess you up uh, but she does bring increased speed and increased attack i think with mordecai the increased attack not so good but it would be one of your only source of increased speed so that would be interesting I think Deacon with the turn meter, you could maybe make it work for you because it's on such a short cooldown, three turns, but with an extra turn, it's more like a two-turn cooldown. 
got a good speed aura as well and the decreased defense and the leech too so i think deacon would probably be coming in there next up i would be probably definitely leaning towards phoenix it's pretty much gotta be this a1 hits so hard then he also has the AoE with a chance for block buffs. Now it's 80%. You can master it up to 85%. So it's not super reliable. And it's a four turn cooldown. And he's spirit affinity. So that might not work super well. But I think that's likely what you go for. He does also have decreased speed. And in fact, a backup decreased defense. I'd say the decreased speed is something you care about more. Um, but I think he's just going to be your main source of damage. So I think that's, yeah, plus block buff. So I'd be definitely trying to lock in the Phoenix. And at this point, like, man, this is already a super high damage team. Shamael can do absolutely tons. Mordecai will do loads. Phoenix will do loads. We have increased attack for Shamael and Phoenix. Deacon, he'll do some damage too. At this point, I think you're pretty much purely looking at support. Godseeker is pretty much got to be, I think, the one that you go for. Um, you, could, you could bring in Cardinal with the revive. Uh, but I mean, she's just, she's just, let's be real, nowhere near as good. I think Godseeker is the way. She's got the strong revive. She's got strong healing. She's tanky. She's strong. It's just a, she's probably the pick. And then it becomes fairly awkward because we don't have, unless we do Shamael as a mischief tank, and that's hard with player power as well. That could be a problem. Um, <laughs> could be a problem, though we don't have that many buffs for them to steal, to be fair. So maybe it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I was thinking about this, and this final pick is interesting. I would actually probably go for Carlinia, which is crazy, but I was flicking through them, and this is probably what I would go for. She brings you AoE decrease attack. She has a small chance of burning here as well, which is kind of nice as backup. Then she has decreasing debuffs by a turn and putting strength in. I think that's going to be quite good for removing any of the crowd control stuff, because like I said, I don't think you'll be building resistance with player power limitations. The strengthen, I think, is going to be important to help you survive. But yeah, basically, I think strengthen plus decreased attack. Bam, that gets you past Head of Wrath. Um, she can decrease buffs on enemies. I think that's really strong as well. Resist in all battles aura if you're going to use it. I would be looking at Carlinia myself. I think that would be uh, my go-to pick. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be pretty. I'd be looking at that one personally. So it's an interesting team. I mean, it has no increased speed has tiny amount of decrease speed it's really missing that but you do have deacon pumping stuff out you could choose to boost deacon use his speed aura and have him being boosted by shamael giving you that turn meter boost very frequently that could be a strong option i'd be very curious um you definitely got a fair few squishy champions it'd be interesting you probably try to get in a cursed set to get hex to try get that in on someone i'm not sure deacon and cursed would probably be my go-to or potentially Deacon in Provoke. I would be very intrigued to see which way they go. Does he try to run Provoke sets? Or do you just let the Head of Decay cleanse away? But bring in Cursed and really try up the damage. Like I think you get Cursed set out. I think then you can kill Head of Mischief very quickly and remove that problem. Uh, you could focus Decay. You could focus people down. It could be interesting. But yeah, I think that would be my, my initial thought about the team. So I'm really excited actually to see what MTG Jedi is uh, going to put together with this one. Okay, next up, jumping over. It wants to scroll too far, and now I made it too big. Sephira with the Knights Revenant, with the S in the Knights. <laughs> um, very interesting. So Sephira's from my team, uh, but he hasn't told me exactly what he's running so far. Hasn't told me. So this one is definitely spicy too. I like this faction for this boss. I actually ran it for Hydra last time around. Now, I got really unlucky in my run, and we lost... Uh, which sucked because our team was real good. But hey, it just shows you we got some bad luck on the day and it fell apart. Shows you how these things go. This faction is, again, interesting. I feel like there's, with all these factions, it's a fun thing. There are a lot of problems. What would I lock in here? I think the first thing I would lock in uh, would probably be Whisper. I actually think Whisper. I, I know for a fact he's bringing her in. Because uh, it's Saf. He loves Whisper. I think Whisper would be my go-to. She just does so much damage against bosses with the weaken. Gives herself the increased attack. She ignores defense if they're under weaken. I think she is my main damage. And basically, no matter what, I feel like I'm building the team around her. So I'd even be picking her first over a decreased defense. Um, for the decreased defense, I mean, you, you have to pick basically Thylacia. And she's also really strong. Decreased defense. She can extend debuff. She can debuff spread. And she also brings Hex. 
there you go. It lets you not need a cursed set. And you can bring her in and she can absolutely slam. So she's a really good source of damage. She's super squishy, but she's a great source of damage. Number three, these ones are fairly straightforward picks, I think, at the start. Rector Drath, I mean, it basically has to be. We have two very squishy champions right here that are trying to do damage. Rector Drath um, gives you the healing. She brings the revive. Also brings decreased attack, which is massive. She does give you some potential to play around resistance as well, which is uh, interesting. So I don't know if we're going to go for that. Um, okay, so I think those three, we lock them in pretty straightforward. After that, <laughs> after that, it becomes more difficult. I'm going to go for a bold choice and go for a rare champion. I know MTG Jedi loves this champion. I'm going to say Guardian would be my next pickup, believe it or not. Guardian comes in, block debuffs, counterattack, and continuous heal. Three buffs, and you don't have any of those. Well, I mean, there are three unique buffs. So he can mischief tank. He can strip off buffs with his A1, which is nice. Uh, and then he's got block buffs as well. It's a pretty terrible chance. It's super random. It is not reliable. Uh, he's just a rare. Right? He's just a rare. But I think I would probably be bringing him in just for that block buffs and some of that mischief tanking, just to take some of that pressure off. You could put him in a Guardian set as well to make the team tank here. There's lots of options. Guardian in a Guardian set. I mean, it's in the name as well. So I'd probably be leaning towards that. Next, I would be looking, I think, at Golden Reaper, probably. Seeing as we got a Mischief Tank in there, that increased speed buff, I think, is really strong on a three-turn cooldown with Turn Meter. That's very good. Her A1 decreasing ally skill cooldowns, very strong as well. Then A, we decrease attack. So giving us that consist Well, it's not super consistent, but hopefully consistent enough. Um, decrease attack to make surviving strong enough. It's a spicy one. You could rely on the Rector Draft decrease attack. Golden Reaper gives you sort of a bit of overlap, a bit of redundancy there. Um, I think it's probably the way to go because the increased speed, but I'm not 100% sure. And yeah, okay, so we've got we've got a good bit of damage. We've got healing. We've got some control. Not too bad. Uh, it's not amazing, but it's not too bad. I think I'd probably bring in Doom Priest as the final pick. Increase attack, cleansing, and healing. I think probably Doom Priest as the final one would be what I would go for. Again, just trying to keep our team tanky and alive. I feel like we keep Thylessia and Whisper alive. I think two damage dealers, that's going to be absolutely plenty. They're going to rip through. The increase attack for Thylessia, she can pump out some pretty solid damage. Um, it's obviously not necessary to have increased attack because of Whisper, but there's not a ton of other great options, to be honest with you. I feel like you kind of need something to make you sort of tanky. Miscreated Monster, maybe the ally protection, but I don't think he brings anything else. And some shielding. I mean, it's okay. It's not great. Tenacia as an option, AoE attack, equalizing HP, um, she could be okay. But you do start to run out of good champs. I mean, you could just use Renegade for cooldown. It's possible. She does have a small decrease speed and decrease accuracy, if but only if they've got active buffs. That's unlikely to be useful. Uh, the small decrease speed, not terrible, plus the reset. You could try run Renegade, but I, I'm gonna think I st I think I will stick with these ones. This is probably the thing I would try first, and hopefully it would go well. But I'm I'm not super sure. But yeah, that's what I'd be looking for there. And then finally, Demon Spawn with Victor Tez, interesting faction again, and we do have some really really strong rares in here. So I will say I'm curious about what he's gonna bring in. I mean, again, the number one thing. Nearly always, I mean, you got to lock in some damage. I mean, Gorlos has to be in there as your decreased defense champion. I think that's basically necessary. He also brings the single target burn and decreased accuracy, which is great. He's got a lot of really good moves at turn meter boost. Gorlos, I think, is basically MVP. He kind of has to be there. There's sort of no option uh, except to bring him in. So Gorlos is definitely number one. I would probably be trying then... Probably try bring in Umbral Enchantress next, I think. Uh, she brings you block buffs on a three-turn cooldown with a three-turn duration. I think that gives you a lot of consistency. Gets you past Poison Cloud, gets you past all that stuff. I think that's the way to go. She does some okay damage. She could provoke in an emergency as well, but it, it locks her out of her skills for five turns. So not ideal, but it is something you could do. Um, so I think I would be probably bringing in her. 
After that, it gets tricky. I know he was interested in Tarshan brings weaken, increased defense and turn meter. He has provoke as well. Strengthen when he drops low. Tarshan is an option. Would I go for that? I think he might. Hmm. This becomes it becomes a lot more tricky here. I would probably be saying Skimphos next was my thought. He brings AoE decrease attack, and he also basically cleanses your team, which is wacky. Then he can transfer uh, buffs to a target enemy. So you can set him up priority. Priority one curse feeder, two clutch of woe. So uh, take all the debuffs, throw them all over. So like throw all the poisons onto him, then throw all the poisons onto suffering, and it does pretty good damage. He does have decreased speed, a chance, a good chance for it, and it's A1 too, which is nice. Uh, healing from debuffs, and he does give himself his own increased attack crit damage. Could be bad for mischief stuff. I uh, could steal increased attack crit damage is scary. I think I would put in probably Skimphos um, as my next pick, just for the decreased attack mainly. We've got the decreased defense and decreased attack. That's good. We've got block buffs. Probably next, I'd probably bring in Diabolist, I think, for speed. Increase speed and an AoE attack. Per meter boosting, it's okay. Then A1, I don't know, does she do enough? I'm not sure. But she does give you some speed control, which is pretty good. I think, I think it'd be wrong to put her next. Tanix is also a really good option. Decrease speed uh, and healing. That's a very strong option too. Hmm. I th let's go for a safe option. I think maybe Tanix, I would put her in next. I think Akoth is probably a pretty safe option. Akoth comes in, he has an AoE burn, and then he's an AoE attack with shield, so it gives you survivability. Good, uh, good champion to choose for a cursed set as well. He could give you the hex, put it on. Vildrax does bring you a hex just by default with an AoE, then he's another AoE that can increase enemy debuffs. That could be interesting as well, but I think I prefer probably Akoth with a cursed set. Probably. This one, I find this faction very, very challenging, I'm going to be honest. At that point, I'm worried about these guys being real squishy, Skimphos and Gorlos. But we've got, we've got lots, I mean, Gorlos, Skimphos, Akoth is decent damage. Umbral is a bit, um, I think you probably would bring in Durr to be safe, I think. Durr the Hungerer, he comes in. He has a bit of healing, reflect damage, and continue. This could be dodgy, though. But he does bring a revive. I say you'd want to avoid Durr if possible, but I'm not sure that you could. Maybe we could. Maybe we could. You know what? You know what I would actually do? I might actually try to go in no reviver, bring in Tanix, and then bring in Tarshan. How about that? How does that look? So interesting, right? The Tarshan. He is providing us with increased defense, helping our tankiness, turn meter, weaken. He does bring us some more provokes too, which is kind of nice. Uh, and then Tanix is bringing the decreased speed and healing. Also uh, does give you some damage reduction. So that's where the question is, can we keep Skimphos? I mean, this is you might jump in and try it and be like, no, Gorlos and Skimphos just die immediately. This is terrible. But I'm just curious, with the shielding here, with the increased defense, with Tainix, is it enough to stay alive? You've got decrease attack and cleansing from Skimphos. Maybe. Maybe. So I would probably be looking at this, but it's a wacky one. You've got the increased defense, ups Akot's and Umbral's damage. Uh, I guess you don't have an increased attack for Gorlos. It's gonna, I don't know, man. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> but I think I might go for it. Yeah. Gorlos's backup decrease. Uh, or HP burn as well. I don't know. I, I think so. So there you go. Let, let's stick with it. You know what? YOLO. Let's let's just go for it, man. Let's just go for it. These are the predictions then. There we are. Let me move me out of the way. My official predictions for what I would try first. I'm very curious as to whether some of these ideas are absolutely terrible. I'm really interested in what these guys are going to put together. The yeah, MTG Jedi. I feel like that's just a good, solid team. You've got solid damage. You've got a great revive. Um, that seems really solid. Saf with a Knight's Revenant. I'd be looking at this. Again, fairly solid team in terms of survivability, etc. A little bit lacking on control, perhaps. Um, you know, Guardian is, is quite... He's only a rare. He's got long cooldowns. The block buffs is very random. So that would uh, scare me a bit. 
yeah, I think again, a solid enough team. Victor Tez, these demon spawn, would this team work? I mean, it's definitely a spicy one with the Gorlos and the Skimpos and no revive, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I wonder, you could even, maybe Diabolus, increase speed, maybe that's too crazy. I think Tainax decrease speed is probably the way to go. Um, but I don't know, it gets cleansed off, you're in a rough spot. It's, it's, it's interesting, man, this is so interesting. I absolutely love it. Uh, I can't wait to watch it. I'm going to have to catch it late, unfortunately, because I'm not going to be there tomorrow. I'm away. Busy all day, but you bet you I'm going to be tuning in to the VOD. Um, actually, this I should be release, releasing this day of, actually. So, yeah, stay tuned. This should be out very soon before the Hydra runs happen. So you can watch it before the Hydra runs, get hyped up, see if my predictions are correct, or watch the Hydra run first, come back to this video and go, wow, Nub, your predictions are stupid. They didn't do anything like that, and their teams were way better than you thought. Uh, so your ideas would have been way worse. I'm curious, but yeah, look, there we go. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, found it interesting. Um, always fun for me, theory crafting the Hydra and what to prioritize. But yeah, I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.